was on, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ross, I like games, and today... Well, it's time to look at another Transformers card. I like analyzing Transformers cards. I adore the Transformers TCG. And although we've analyzed a lot of them at this stage, we have not analyzed them all. And we have not had a chat about Slipstream Strategic Seeker. And I would very much like to. Now, it is an eight cost plane, which is an exactly average cost card. The health of 13 is one above average, which is lovely. The defense of one or two, well, the average is two, so that's a bit below. And the attack of three is below the average of four. So although we like the half, we don't love the stats as a whole. But I like both of the skills here. In bot mode, when you attack and flip at least three different icons, you get plus three attack until the end of the turn. Well, now all of a sudden, you're not doing free attack. You got six attack. And six is significantly better than the average of four. Now, it does say at least three different icons. We've only got three. We've got blue, we've got orange, and we've got white. Why did it say at least three different icons? This is a classic example of future proofing. Yeah, there's only three different types of icons now. But you know what? There might be more in the future. Now, I have checked in the FAQ, and it's not specifically mentioned but i'm willing to go out on a limb and say that if there's no icon on a card this doesn't count again i could be wrong but if we take something like photon bomb for instance that just doesn't have an icon that wouldn't count i don't believe so i will try and double check if i can but i feel confident that wouldn't so okay not the easiest skill to use because you have unfortunately got to flip an orange a blue and a white and the FAQ does specifically refer to that combination, which seems to be the only one. But remember that when you flip a white, you do flip two more cards. So it's worth bearing in mind that you will increase your chances by flipping a white, which is nice. As for the alt mode, this is even better. When one of your planes attacks, move one damage counter from it to the defender and what i really love about this is it's when any of your planes attack so this is a skill that really works with all of your planes lovely and i cannot go any further in the video without mentioning an action card that i absolutely love it's bombing run bombing run allows you to choose an enemy character and move one damage counter from each of your planes to that enemy uh, you know how I mentioned Photon Bomb earlier? Yeah, I'm thinking Photon Bomb. And what you can do with Photon Bomb is put two damage counters on every character, yours and your opponent's. Then use Bombing Run to move one damage counter from each of your planes to the enemy. If you want to do it both in one turn, you've got to use Brainstorm. But then with Slipstream, you also move one damage counter from your plane to the defender when you attack. So you're essentially doing two damage to all of your characters, two damage to all of your opponent's, but then moving the damage off of yours to your opponents, which I personally find rather hilarious indeed. Now, you don't have to play Slipstream with planes, but clearly here I am a big fan of playing it with planes. My favorite planes are still Starscream, the Air Commander, because bold two in bot mode and then in alt mode when you flip to it, do damage to an enemy equal to the number of other planes that you have, at which point Skywarp Sneaky Prankster as a 6 cost will give you a free wide planes deck. And I'm also a huge fan of Thundercrack Mac Warrior. When you play an action, you get plus 1 attack until the end of the turn in bot mode. And it's already a 5 to begin with, which is quite high. And then when you flip to alt mode, you do 2 damage to a melee enemy. So that's quite nice. But you are an 8 cost, which means you can essentially fit into a free wide deck. The problem is, this is one of those cards, in alt mode, you're really relying on being a plane. And the issue is that if you play this in a non-planes deck, you still get to do your extra attacking, but you don't get to move damage counters across. So as much as I do like this generally, I do think it is very, very important to note that to make the most of this, I think it really does need to be played in a planes deck. 
And I think the ones I've mentioned are really the ones you want to go for here. Now, don't forget we've got Sunstorm Fusion Flyer, whose attack is equal to the number of cards you have in hand. And when you flick into alt mode and you've got fewer than three cards in hand, draw till you have three. I like that, and then you could still play Skywarp to be a free Wide Plains deck, which would work quite nicely. And it's not necessarily the best card, but Starscream scheming second in command, which is a little bit of a mouthful. It's a 10 cost with bold one and tough one, attack of five, health of 14. The stats are good. And it's a common, so that does give you a nice little budget option. Now, in terms of being a plane, we have already mentioned Bombing Run. But don't forget you've got Armed Hovercraft, and I love Armed Hovercraft. When you put this on a ranged character, it's a plane, do one damage to each enemy. Okay, so I suppose it doesn't have to be for planes, but it fits this whole theme of doing extra damage, moving damage around, etc. We do also have Aerial Recon, which ups your defense by one, can only be put on planes, and when the upgraded character attacks or defends, look at the top card of your deck, and if you want, you can scrap it. That basically helps you to manipulate the cards that are on top. So if you don't want an orange icon and you see one, scrap it. If you don't want a blue icon and you see one, scrap it. What's really cool here is if you're playing something like Photon Bomb, for instance, which doesn't have an icon, you really don't want to see that when you're attacking. So using Aerial Recon... To get rid of one with no icon, will up the chance that you'll see three different icons and get the plus three attack, which is rather lovely. Now, we also do obviously see it as a ranged character, and this is in both bot mode and in alt mode. Now, we've already mentioned that you get access to armed hovercraft, but you also get access to rapid ascent. Now, Rapid Ascent is a card I'm a lot less of a fan of. It ups your defense by one, which is fine. But it is quite nice disruption. When you put it on a ranged character, your opponent chooses a card from their hand and scraps it. It doesn't necessarily fit the theme of the deck. You don't have much other disruption when you're playing these planes decks. But then again, call at the right time, you could force your opponent into an awkward discard and maybe you end up winning the game because your opponent has to discard something that they would rather not get rid of. But when we look at Slipstream in bot mode here, what we see is you want three different battle icons so that you can get plus three attack until the end of the turn. And frankly here, our focus needs to be bold. Bold lets you flip extra battle cards when attacking. You need to try and flip three different icons when attacking. So you really need to bold up quite nicely here. Bolding up, I think, is a way you really make the most of this. And then, of course, this does have the added bonus that bold, it doesn't increase your attack per se, but it increases the number of cards you flip, so it kind of increases your attack. You should hit more orange icons, and you're doing this to try and get the plus three attack anyway. So it's kind of nice in that it builds upon your strength of attacking, while also giving you the possibility of raising your attack through the bold anyway. It works quite nicely. And look, if you're going for bold, you really, really want supercharge. Supercharge gives you plus three bold until the end of the turn. That is the best card we've got for emboldening, to be perfectly honest with you. There are a couple of upgrades you can use for bold. Flamethrower will give you bold two, which is quite nice. And Power Sword would give you bold three if you were a melee character, but you're not a melee character, so Flamethrower it will have to be. Supercharge and Flamethrower are the ones you weren't. Now, they do both have orange icons. And this really brings me back around to the most awkward thing about trying to use Slipstream if you are trying to really take advantage of its strengths. And that is, you need to really be flipping the three different battle icons. I mean, this really reminds me of Metroplex. Now, it's nowhere near as full-on as Metroplex. Metroplex, you really need two attack, two defense by which I mean orange and blue, and two of the white, that is extremely awkward and not going to work all that often. Doable, by all means doable, but still somewhat awkward. 
Here, you only need one of each. But you do want to make sure you get some whites in your deck so that you can flip two more cards when attacking. So now you're really flipping at least four. I mean, look, if you only flip two cards and it's a red or an orange and a blue, you, you can't do this. You need one of the first two to be an orange unless you're going full bold, although as I've said, you really should be going full bold. So you've got the complete suite of white icon cars at your disposal, and we've gone through these in a few videos, so I don't want to go through all of them here. I do want to mention Force Field just because I'm a ridiculous, ridiculous fan of Force Field. Just, it guarantees you can only take four damage. I think that's pretty gosh darn awesome. And the thing is that a lot of the... Oh, Piercing Blaster as well. Don't forget Piercing Blaster giving you Pierce free. A lot of the white icon action cards are draw cards. So something like Backup Plan, where you scrap your hand and draw free cards, is a white one. Or Equipment Enthusiast, where you draw a card for each your upgrade. That's what the white cards tend to do as action cards. But then again, you need some draw power, so, you know, go nuts. Slipstream does not fit into my main plane deck. Where I'm just going Star Scream, Air Commander, Thundercrack, Mac Warrior, and Skywarp. But I do think there is absolutely a good deck to be made here with Slipstream. I think you need to play around a bit. I think you need to really go for the three different icons, and I think you need to focus on the white. However, I think there is a bit of potential here. But this is a time, ladies and gentlemen, where you tell me what you think about Slipstream. Tell me what your testing has shown. Tell me what cards you like to pair it with. Go nuts, but please do remember the rule. Be nice with you. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, where I ramble about stuff. But by far the most important thing, as always, is to look after yourselves. Until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Ross, and you've been watching. Wassy plays.